Hello and welcome to another video from Flash Jazz Cat. This is hopefully just going to be a quick video, a fairly quick video. I don't know if I'll put it on Patreon early access. I've got other stuff, proper videos coming up for that. But, but this is an Atari 130XE motherboard here and it doesn't boot. So this is a machine I'd previously worked on. I'd installed the Ultimate One Megabyte, the UEV, replaced all the base RAM, as I seem to remember. I fitted a 74FOE chip. So it went back to America and the owner decided that he wanted to try another device uh, in the motherboard and uh, he wanted a socket under the CPU. So he didn't want to send it all the way back to the UK, so he, he sent it to a local technician to get a socket put under the CPU. Now, this board's been here for absolutely ages while I got through the work queue. The owners had all sorts of problems and stuff with uh, shipping it back etc even if I did get it fixed. I did previously have a look at it. Uh, the owner seemed to think that the ultimate one megabyte had gone bad. Um, it wasn't uh, immediately obvious that there was anything wrong with it and of course I've been a bit more pragmatic when I got the machine out this time and put it on the desk. I've disconnected the ultimate one megabyte completely and I've put an original MMU and an OS ROM back in the computer and it still doesn't work. So it's not the ultimate one megabyte after all. We can completely discount that. Well, I'll show you what happens when I turn it on anyway. That's probably the best thing to do. All right, so here we go, switching on. And you can barely make that out on the, on the screen actually, but that is just a green screen. It's a very dark green screen. So that's it so it doesn't boot. So if we'll disconnect the power. Now, I emailed the owner again last night uh, because uh, I looked around the board. I couldn't see anything obviously wrong with it. It's obviously not the Freddy chip because we get a clock and a picture. It's obviously not the GTIE because we get a picture. I very much doubt if it's the Antic chip. And this is where uh, obtaining information from the customer can really help with the troubleshooting process because he clarified that after that CPU socket was put into the machine and it was sent back to him and he paid, it never worked. It never ever worked after that socket was put in. So that tells us that there's probably something wrong with the socket. So uh, let's have a little look at this. I've already swapped the CPU off camera with a, with a known working one, so it's not a dead CPU. We're looking at some sort of problem with this socket here. So if, uh, if we furnish ourselves with a copy of the schematic here, we can start to ping out the traces between the, um, the CPU down here and the uh, Antic chip. Now I know that the uh, connections for the Ultimate One Megabyte at the top uh, left corner of the CPU uh, are fine because I already pinged them out when I was investigating the uh, Ultimate One Megabyte. So we'll just start um, a little bit further along at the top of the CPU and we'll just use the schematic here to um, see where we need to put the probes and see if everything's okay because I'm pretty convinced there's some sort of broken trace under this uh, CPU socket. Right, so data line always on pin 33 of the CPU, so we've got 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33. So that should be D0 and on Antic, um, that is on pin 30. So it should be down here, right in the middle, and that one's fine. So they run in opposite directions now, so as we go to the next one, that'll be D1. And on Antic, it is pin 32. That one's fine. And then we've got D2 on the CPU, which is pin 32, if that's correct. And on Antic, D2 is pin 31, so that should be there. Okay, and then we've got D3. And that should be the next one along there, I think. I'll double check. So that would be pin 33 on Antic and pin 30 on the CPU. Yeah, according to the schematic. What about the next one? Uh, D4 is pin 40 on Antic. It would have to be awkward. Now, oh, there we go. So there's, there's D4. So D3 is supposed to be here and down there. So we appear not to have D3 for some reason, so let's have a closer look. Right, so here's our socket. Now the uh, the problem pin appears to be this one here, which 
So this is pin 30 on the CPU. Now this one connects to a trace which runs down to here. So this via shoots through the board and goes along and should connect to this trace running down here and connecting to pin 33 on the Antic chip and it seems it doesn't. So let's get the, the probes on here and see where it goes wrong. So it, it definitely goes wrong somewhere. Continuity is lost. So to this pin here and we should put the meter into the correct mode. There we go. That pings out fine. And the other end of this is sort of under this leg of the CPU. I should be able to wedge the probe in there. I'm just going to cut that cross piece off this socket because I can't get to it. It's no good. It's got to go. There we go. That's better. Now I can see what I'm doing. So this via here to this via here. So we've got continuity there, and we've got continuity all the way back to there, but we don't have continuity here. And now we do. I can see exactly what's happened here. So the very act of pressing the probe down on this via here has actually pushed it back into the board and suddenly <laughs> made contact again. I need to get uh, I need to get this at an angle somehow. All right, so we didn't have continuity, and then all of a sudden we do after I pushed the probe directly down on the top of this via. What I think's happened here? Now you see this white peel area on the board there. This tells a little story, and I'm 99% certain that that means that the CPU is taken off the board with hot air. This is an absolute dead giveaway of uh, overheating of the uh, fiberglass of the PCB. So this has got very, very hot. This bit's overheated and it's actually slightly delaminated inside the layers. Now what this appears to have done, which I've just kind of fixed by forcing the probe down on top of this via, which just takes the trace through the board back up to this side of the board. So it comes along under the board on the other side, then back up through this via and then along to there. What I've just done is I've reconnected the plate through that goes through this via uh, just by pushing it down with with the probe. So what's happened is that the boards kind of swelled up and expanded with the heat here and that has cracked the plate through that goes through this via right through the board and I've just sort of made it make intermittent contact again by pushing down on the top of that uh, via so that obviously that's not a proper fix but what we can do is we can just run a piece of wire through this via which I, I which I'm pretty sure would come off with the slightest persuasion and that will fix it so I'm just going to heat that up stick a piece of wire through it and I think that will probably fix it and yeah if we look through the we actually get the camera to look through this little magnifier that I've got on the desk you can see where it's lifted from the board there that via it's proud of the board so the it's come on stuck it's lifted and it's cracked and it's broken the connection through the board All right so i've just stuck a, re a resistor leg straight through that hole from the top melting the solder in the via as i do so so that should have bonded the two halves of the via together uh, and then i'll go on the other side and i'll just snip uh, the excess off so there's the other end of that wire coming through here um, so I can just touch that up a little bit with uh, the iron and we should have a nice solid bond. This is a, a little bit neater than running a jumper wire anyway across the uh, back of the board. So that's nice. The reason there's flux all over the, over the bottom of this socket anyway is because I did previously reflow uh, the solder connections when I was uh, looking at it. Just to see if that made any difference, and it didn't. But you can look how, look how conspicuous that, uh, that that heat damage is on the board, and the problem area is right at the bottom of where that heat damage occurred. So we're quite lucky, I would imagine, that we don't have similar problems with these vias here, here, and down here. They're just on the edge of where the trouble was. That one's right smack in the middle of it. Well, I was about to say I'm so confident this is going to work that I'm going to plug the ultimate back in before we turn it on, but I'm not because just in case there is some secondary problem. 
it's better to be pragmatic and we'll just uh, we'll run it as stock plug it in remember to put the CPU back in as well that might help and turn on and there we go it boots fixed let's go one stage further and plug the ultimate in why not okay ultimate one megabyte is in let's turn on see what we get aha green screen again so we've got a secondary issue <laughs> my god it turns out the os rom cable was knackered as well Bro broken pin on the heart and adapter oh right so replace the os rom cable let's power on and see what we get there we go working system so there you go, hopefully that's an object lesson in the perils of uh, socket and work. I don't know if the technician who put the socket under the CPU maybe had no way of turning the computer on to test it, fair enough. But if you've used hot air to take an IC off the board and you see a peel patch uh, on the board itself, that is an immediate uh, indicator that the board got a little bit overheated. And in fact, it was plain to see that there was a potential issue with that via, that transitional via. Uh, it wasn't as if it was damaged by yanking the chip out of the board when the solder melted. That was just a transitional via that took a trace from one side of the board to the other. Uh, but you could see that it was a little bit proud of the board on the top. So I'm assuming, obviously, anybody who's doing this is going to have a continuity tester. They're going to have a multimeter on the bench. That's a perfect opportunity to just ping out that trace, just to make sure, before you put the socket in, uh, that everything's still connected. Uh, and I advocate for this uh, all the time, even though uh, when I do work like this on an Atari, I can always um, test it by turning it on after I've done the work. But nevertheless... The best time to fix something like a, a broken via or a broken trace is before you put the new socket on the board because you can access everything. You've got clear access to everything. Case in point here, after I cut that cross member off the, the socket, I had much better access. I could see what I was doing. You could see the damage to the via. And that's when I kind of in, inadvertently fixed the problem by pushing down on the top of that via, which shoved the little metal a cylinder or one half of it the top half of it back through the board it made contact with the with the plate through on the bottom half of the board and the machine basically started to work again but of course now it's anchored together properly with a piece of wire right through the board uh, and of course the fact that we had a secondary problem um, hardly helped the situation because uh, that that's confusing certainly for the client as well who thought there was a problem with this ultimate board Technically speaking, there was. So there was a broken pin on the Harting connector at this side of the uh, cable. I've borrowed this cable from my 130XE, actually, just so I didn't have to start fabbing up a new cable in the middle of the video. Yeah, if you're doing work like this, um, at the very least, ping out anything that looks a little bit suspect. And that definitely did look suspect. But the, the person who's done it's just thought, oh, everything looks fine. There's no obvious breaks in, in, the, in the copper. Slap the socket back on top, which of course completely obscured from view what we were uh, what we were interested in looking at. Shipped it back, and the, the client gets it back, and it doesn't work. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that one. It was a little bit longer than I thought, actually. <laughs> Ooh, sounds a bit rude, but uh... Ooh, sounds a bit rude. <laughs> but yeah, just thought you might be interested in that one um, as an object lesson in how well how not to do it basically because this this socket broke the motherboard it prevented it from booting completely with a bit of luck the technician involved will uh, actually get the chance to see this video and the uh, him and the client can come to some kind of arrangement but anyway thank you very much for watching and with a bit of luck i'll see you in the next video so bye bye for now